All right, we have our transmitter, we have our horn here at two feet, so I'm safe. If I put my hand out here, my hand can be a reflector. Now remember, reflection is just bouncing. And if you look at how I was holding my hand, the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection, right? Well, I'm not going to keep my hand out there because, believe it or not, you can feel a little bit of heat. And I don't want to expose my hand to that for too long. So, piece of aluminum, very good reflector for microwaves. And so you can see that angle is about 45 degrees. It bounces here, bounces in, so the angle of reflection and the angle of incident are equal. Okay. Another thing we can try. So we've got bouncing. If I take this thing and turn it slightly, so I'm picking up some of the signal from that, and then I use this reflector to pick up some of the reflected symbol, signal. Can you hear those? Dun, 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 What's happening is we're getting radiation from there and radiation from here coming and combining. Sometimes they come at the same point, so high in the, in the wave, they add up. But if they're coming in opposite, one high, one low, it zeroes out. So we get highs and lows, and it's called interference. At, at this point, I want to mention something here, too. It's called, at this particular interference, it's called a standing wave. If I look where those waves are, they're in the same point, standing still, basically. And if I measure the distance between them, so here's a peak, here's a peak, about a centimeter and a half. That's half the wavelength of this. The wavelength of, at 10 gigahertz is about three centimeters. That's about a centimeter and a half. So that's a standing wave. All right, a special reflector is called the three corner reflector. And I'm going to place the horn antenna down here and capture the radiation from this that's reflected. These are very special devices because what happens is any radiation that comes into this bounces right back to the device. So these were placed, something like this, where it's placed on the moon so laser beams could be bounced back to telescopes so we could measure the distance to the moon and uh, track that. So these are helpful devices in science, and I'm going to come back here behind the horn, and I'm going to put my horn back here, I'm going to put the reflector in, lots of radiation bouncing back, okay? So, very useful device, three corner reflector. One last thing I'd like to show while we're down here, just quickly review, good reflector, now I've got this device here, And I put that in, basically nothing's happening. This is a microwave absorber. Very special material, absorbs almost all the microwave radiation hitting it. And it's very useful for protecting things like satellites or devices that are sensitive to microwave radiation. At this point we're going to go back down the end and take a look at refraction or the bending of waves. Next, let's take a look at refraction. Refraction is the bending of the radiation coming toward it. So the waves are coming down, hit a material, and then bend through them. So let's take a look at some of these. We'll set this up. I'm going to show you a few different materials. This, fat in the middle and tapered at either end, is called a convex lens. And this is polystyrene, the styrofoam that's used for insulation. And if I put this in here, it acts as a lens that increases the signal. So the radiation comes in and is bent, comes in and is bent, and it comes to a focus here. And so the signal strength goes up. This one is the opposite, concave is called, where it goes in in the middle. And if I It's lowering the signal strength. So it's spreading it apart. So instead of bending that way, it bends out. OK? 
Okay, so it's lowering the signal. This material is not the best at meeting the lens, so let's try one that's a little better. This is wax. If I put this in here, very high signal. This is a convex lens. Here's a concave lens. Very low signal. So much better material for a lens. And then the best material for a lens is this. This is acrylic. Almost peaks the meter. So this is the convex, and here's the concave. Very low signal. Okay? The last type of refractor I want to mention is this rod, and it's called a poly rod. And this has some interesting properties besides refraction. So John Krauss explained it that this material would take and bend the radiation down to a point. But other people have mentioned that when the rays hit this, they transmit a signal along the surface. It's also called a lossy waveguide. We're going to talk about waveguides in just a minute. But it transmits a signal along its surface. And so it creates a very high energy. It peaks the meter. Okay? So what is this doing? It's, it's behaving like a lens. But the other thing I want to show you is, you know, we talked about beam width, very narrow beam width, and the strength is like a very large horn. So this thing is behaving as if it were this big. So it's a very interesting refractor and perhaps a waveguide, lossy waveguide. And this is called a polyrod antenna, and it's a design that's used in nature in your eyes. Hundreds of millions of these poly rods are in your eyes and allow you to see. I wanted to show the refraction through a prism a little better, so we're going to film from above slightly, and I wanted to show you a few things before we do that. We have the normal, the 90 degree angles to this side here, is here, and we're coming in at 30 degrees. And I'll lift this off, and you can see what we're expecting to happen is when it hits that material, the wax, it's going to bend. And then it continues through that material and then it bends again when it hits the air, okay? And so it's going to come out in this direction. And so we'll put the prism back on top and we're ready to go. So I have the radiation coming in here and we're going to see if it's going to come out. Right now we're getting very little signal as I bring it over. So it's at a peak right, right about here. So it's coming in here, bending here, just like we expected. Next I'm going to bring this down here, close to the horn, and we're going to take a look at something called a wave guide. And so I'm going to put this here, and you'll notice it's not receiving any sound, really. Not much voltage coming through. I have these pipes. What's going to happen, these pipes are actually going to take the signal and transmit it through to the horn. And this is called a waveguide, used a lot in microwaves. So when I drop this in, this is about an inch and a quarter diameter. Lots of signal. One inch. Lots of signal. Three quarters of an inch. Lots of signal. Half an inch. Not much. A little reflection and some funny things going on. But it cuts off at this size. Now remember, our wavelength is three centimeters. This will not allow a wavelength of that size to pass through. Now if you think about it, is there a way, if, we're, if we only have this size pipe, is there a way of allowing that to pass through? The answer is yes. Remember what we learned before about lenses. If we take our poly rod and shove it in the tube, 
we now have something that behaves like something that's much wider. And we get a lot of signal. Okay, so if you're stuck with something, you just fill it with the right material and you get something that passes radiation. Through. Okay. I'm going to come back down the other end. So I'll meet you down here. And I want to talk about one more type of polarization that we haven't talked about. We talked about linear polarization, where everything's going up and down in straight lines. I want to talk now about circular polarization. And these can be right-handed or left-handed, or left-handed, okay? The ones I have here are left-handed only because it was easier to wind a coil in a left-handed fashion. So, quick review. If I stick this in front, lots of lots of gain. It's a polyrod antenna, but it's still linear polarization. But if I take this and put this little circular coil, a little helix, on the antenna and position it about there and stick this in. You notice we get something that's almost constant around the 90 degrees. Okay? And that's a great feature of circular polarization. It can be picked up no matter where your horn is. Sometimes as the Earth turns, we're looking at things out in space, the orientation of an object will cause it to go out of linear polarization fields. So the radiation will drop off. Circular polarization, though, doesn't change in that respect. Okay. I'd like to show a real world kind of demonstration. So we're going to turn off the camera for a moment and we're going to set this up. And we'll be right back. <laughs>